Hello, this is Mr. McLeod, and I will be doing a demo on JavaFX events. Uh, and the idea is we will start with a GUI that uh, has some buttons and sliders, but doesn't do anything uh, in response to them yet. And we're going to add a uh, uh, response so that it will actually change things um, when you press the button or when you move the slider. So to start with, uh, the general idea is that we will be making some uh, private inner classes that will respond to uh, the events. And so in order to make it easier to uh, change things, uh, we're going to make all of our uh, buttons and uh circles and text uh, we're going to make them attributes so that they'll be in scope so let's start um by taking a look at uh, uh we have this button i don't know uh, it used to be called money button let's just call it uh reset button because that's what it's actually doing now uh Actually, the better way to do that, by the way, is to right click and say refactor, rename, reset button, and that will change it anywhere else that it's referred to. And this one we can call clear button. So again, whoops, again, we want to uh, go refactor, rename, clear button. This is uh, particularly useful if there's lots of references. In this case, there isn't actually that many references to that. Okay, uh, but in fact, we're going to change this so that instead of saying button, reset button there, we just say reset button uh, because we're going to declare it up here. Uh, it is very important that you don't redeclare it down uh, further uh, down here because otherwise you will just be making a new temporary variable uh, that will not be the same as the attribute. Uh, okay, so we're going to do the same thing with the clear button. Make that an attribute. Okay, and uh, Let's see, then let's go ahead and do it also. We might as well just do it for all of these. So uh, we have the slider here. So we're going to make that an attribute. And let's see what else do we have. We have the text and the circles. Okay, so here's the circles. Uh, let's make, actually, hold on here. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, refactor, rename. I want to call this circle one. So there, that was kind of nice. It changed it in a lot of places. And I'm going to rename this circle two. All right, so then we'll make this also an attribute. Okay. And let's just do circle two this way. All right, uh, but very important, do not forget down here, we got to make sure that is not a local variable anymore. All right, so uh, then the other thing that we're going to do is we're actually even going to make this uh, pick group. Uh, we're going to make that an attribute as well because the clear button, I'm planning on making it actually remove the circles from the pick group, which means we're going to need to access to the pick group. All right, uh, so we've got our buttons, our circles, our slider, 
our pick uh, ah I think we wanted the text too so let's make the text as well and that is declared down here uh, looks like I used to call it text so let's refactor that to txt because that's my new favorite name for it okay there we go so uh, all right so let's start with the buttons so we're gonna make a uh, notice where I am here so this is the end of the class this is the end of the start function so after the start function very important that you don't do this inside the start function you're going to make a private uh, class and I'm gonna call it button handler and this is going to handle all of our buttons and in order to uh, do that it needs to implement the event handler uh, interface uh, and notice that uh, Event handler actually uh, takes a uh, parameter here uh, where you can define what type of event it takes. So in this case, I'm going to want it to be able to handle action events. Uh, so if I, oops, uh, class button handler, ah, implements. <laughs> Uh, so now it's gonna say, all right, I got to, I have to import event handler and I have to import action event and I also need to add the imp unimplemented method handle. So handle is going to be the method that gets called, uh, every time, uh, this button handler uh, has an action to handle. So if you click on a button that has this as its button handler, then it will, or in its list of handlers, then it will uh, call handle on uh, this event handler. Okay, uh, let's call this uh, event, because that's what it is. Every once in a while it seems to call that arg0 for some reason. All right, so now that we have uh, a button handler class, we can uh, basically uh, say, all right, so when this button is pressed, we're going to say if the event dot get source so that we can see which button was pressed. So if the event dot get source equal equal uh, uh, reset button. So remember we made a attribute reset button. Oops, what was that? Uh, somehow I hit quotes. There we go. Uh, so we made a reset button attribute. So we could actually find out. Hey, you know, event. What was the source of your event. So in other words, which uh, node actually uh, fired the event. So uh, what was this in response? Or which button was responsible for this, in other words? Uh, note, by the way, that get source just returns an object. It actually doesn't know it's a button. Uh, we happen to know that it's probably going to be a button. So uh, and regardless of what it is, if we use equal equal, it will say, hey, is it the same object as this? Um, in which case they're equal. doesn't matter if it knew they were the same type or not. Okay. Uh, so now we can say uh, if that is true, then we will do what we need to do to reset. So we will, uh, let's set the value of the slider. Um, so slider dot set value uh, to uh, 
slider dot get max. So that's going to give me the maximum value for the slider divided by two. So it'll set it right in the middle. Uh, and then we're going to check to see if uh, the pick does not have circle one. So get children dot contains circle oops, one, then we're going to add it. So this is important that we have to check that it doesn't already have it or it'll throw an error if we try to add it again. Uh, so if it doesn't, um, so let's do not. So if it doesn't, then get children dot add circle one. Okay. And then same logic again applies to circle two. If circle two is not in the picture, add it. All right. So that's going to reset it. Uh, and else if the event dot get source uh, is clear button, then we're going to remove the circles. Uh, so that's simply pick dot get children and there's a nice little remove all uh, careful remove all does not it takes parameters so remove all you do actually need to say which are the all uh, which which are the things you want to remove so we can say circle one circle two so Remove all despite the name doesn't mean remove everything. It means remove whatever you pass it here. Um, okay. Uh, if you actually wanted to remove everything, by the way, you could have said remove all. And then uh, there's a remove all that takes a collection. And you could send it the pick dot get children. So if you're sending it your, everything in you, then you will remove everything in you. All right. So put those back in there. Okay. So if we ran this right now, uh, nothing would happen because button handler is not actually added to any buttons. So we need to go back up here and say, all right, uh, reset button dot add. Uh, oh, what's sorry, not add set on so all the uh, generally the events are called set on something right whatever that the thing is that uh, the action or the mouse click uh, so we're going to do set on action uh, new button handler and so that way button the reset button will have that handler and uh, the clear button will have the same handler. Uh, so if we run that, if we hit clear, they're gone. We hit reset, they're back. Yay. And if we move the slider around, uh, clear doesn't do anything, but reset does it sets it back to the middle so that looks like that's all working great uh, so for the second part of this uh, I'm going to stop the video right here and we'll have uh, part two coming up where we're going to deal with the uh, sliders and the, the circles so Join me soon in video two.